Donna Esmeralda, Who Ate Everything, written by Melissa De La Cruz, illustrated by Primo Galanoza. Once upon a time, in the middle of a group of 7,000 happy islands named after the King of Spain, there lived a lady named Donna Esmeralda. She had a big bouffant hairdo and was much smaller than you. She was about the size of a toddler, but she was very, very old. Do you know the word ancient? It means older than old, and that's how old Donna Esmeralda was. Donna Esmeralda had a voracious appetite. That means she was always hungry. Nothing ever satisfied her. If she could, she would eat everything in sight. But because she was small and forgotten, she had to settle for what she could get. And that meant leftovers. Lots and lots of leftovers. She became especially good at gobbling up what you and children like you didn't want to eat. Donna Esmeralda lived on eating children's uneaten plates and diet soda. To make it easier, she carried two straws, one for gulping down her diet soda and one to slurp up everything else. If you didn't like the taste of tofu, she ate it. Leftover liver and onions, she'd suck it up with her straw. She supped on soggy Brussels sprouts and attacked all the asparagus. She munched on mushy mushrooms and gorged on gooey grapefruit. She feasted on fresh broccoli and scarfed up squishy sweet potatoes. She went to town on tiramisu and zoomed up zucchini bread. What's tiramisu? Ask your parents. They'll love it. Also, you should really eat your zucchini bread. It's yummy. And she gobbled on the ginnelling. Ugh, the ginnelling. No one likes ginnelling. Where did she put it all? She remained smaller than small. Some said it all went to her hair. She did have very, very big hair. Naughty children began to notice. Naughty children learned that all they had to say was, I don't want to eat this, and Donna Esmeralda would hear them. She had ears that were very attuned to what children were doing, which means she was very, very, very good at hearing. She would hear them push away from the table. She would hear the clang of the fork against the plate, the rustle of a napkin, the sniff of disdain, the complaint, the lament, the cry. She would wait until the coast was clear and pounce. Slurp! She tasted the tofu, sucked up the leftover liver and onions, supped up the soggy Brussels sprouts, attacked all the asparagus, munched on mushy mushrooms, gorged on gooey grapefruit, feasted on fresh broccoli, scarfed up squishy sweet potatoes, went to town on tiramisu, you know what that is by now, and zoomed up zucchini bread, which is very tasty. She should not have left it on your plate. She even gobbled on the guinealing. Ugh, the guinealing. No one likes guinealing except Donna Esmeralda. She ate every bit. Yuck. No matter where Donna Esmeralda went, she always was hungry. And she was always on the lookout for her next meal. Until one day, something happened that hadn't happened before. One day, she heard something she hadn't heard before. She heard the children eating, not only eating, but feasting, gobbling, chewing, slurping, munching, wolfing, gulping, tasting, licking, sipping, attacking, gorging, scarfing, and laughing. It was a party, a party with plenty of food that smelled and looked delicious. When it was over, there was nothing left on their plates, not a crumb, not a speck, nothing. Nothing for Donna Esmeralda, who was very, very hungry. Donna Esmeralda was mad and hungry. She was hangry. She was tired of eating what that the children didn't want to eat. She was sick of leftovers. She wanted to eat what the children wanted to eat. The next day, she followed the children to a picnic by the zoo. This time, she crept out of the shadows, and when the children weren't looking, she ate what they ate. She slurped it up with her straw, chicken nuggets, hamburgers, pizza. Mmm. Care care, chop suey, samosas, yum, milkshakes, adobo, panchet, num, lumpia, bulgogi, tiki misali, burp. The food tasted delicious and she ate more than she ever ate before. But Donna Esmeralda wasn't satisfied. Satisfied means happy, which she wasn't. She looked around. What else could she eat? She took out her straw and just started to slurp. She slurped the plates, the table, the chairs. Yummy. She slurped a vine, a bush, and a tree. Hee hee. She slurped up an elephant and a crocodile. Chomp. She slurped up a caribou and a monkey-eating eagle and a giant vegetarian bat. Gulp. 
Donna Esmeralda still wanted more, so she slurped up the naughty children. Boo-hoo. She slurped up the good children. Very well. She slurped up their parents, too. It's our fault. And that still wasn't enough. But even Donna Esmeralda bit off more than she could chew when she slurped up all the diet soda. Her tummy began to rumble. Her bouffant was ready to tumble. And then... Boom! Out went the parents. Out came the good and the naughty children. Out, out, out went the giant vegetarian bat, the monkey-eating eagle, the caribou, the crocodile, the elephant, the tree, the bush, the vine, and the chairs, the table, and plates. Out came tiki masala, lumpia, oh me, bologogi, adobo, panchet, milkshakes, oh my, samosas, chop suey, kari kari, pizza, oh dear, hamburgers, chicken nuggets, oh no. And out, out, out came the leftovers. Guinea ling, ugh, guinea ling, zucchini bread, tiramisu, ay, sweet potatoes, broccoli, grapefruit, ho, 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 mushrooms, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, geez louise, liver and onions, tofu, golly gee. And that was the end of Donna Esmeralda. The end means, well, you know what it means. I pate. Without Donna Esmeralda, from then on, all children always ate everything on their plates, but the naughty ones still try to this day to say, I don't want to eat this, and they hope that Donna Esmeralda will return with her straw. Hopefully she does not slurp you up too. The end.